Hey everyone! Um, as many of you have probably noticed at this point, I have made an Anastasia uh, cosplay um, from the movie Anastasia. Um, and since it's been a long time uh, dream cosplay, I really wanted to talk about uh, everything, <laughs> really. I said this has been a long time dream cosplay of mine, especially this dress uh, was my favorite. I also thought that uh, this dress had the added uh, bonus that if I hated the outcome, I could ruin the dress completely and just say that it was like post fight with Rasputin kind of thing, because uh, that's what happens in the movie. Um, but I ended up liking it, uh, loving it whatever you say. Uh, it's definitely the most special cosplay I own at the moment uh, and the most special project uh, for me ever, <laughs> really. Um, it all kind of started with this crown, um, which I found at uh, a fabric store that is probably my favorite fabric store at this point. Uh, it's about... Um, I paid 200 grand for it, which is about $30. Um, and that is like insanely cheap and it just looks amazing. Um, <laughs> and I instantly got like the vibes from her crown at the end of the movie, so it kind of sparked the whole project to actually start and not just be a dream. And well, I did have a kind of a vision for how I wanted this project uh, because as some might already have noticed this is not like a screen accurate dress in any way so I had some changes that I wanted to make uh, to the dress from the movie even though I love the original dress I really wanted to make this my own because it was such a big project for me I was very inspired by Jedi Manda's Anastasia dress, she made the same one, as well as uh, Miss Charming Rose and Hannah Alexandra's uh, artwork. And even though, like, all very different, especially like the artwork, um, they all had parts that I loved and that I felt that I could bring into my version of this. I bought a whole bunch of uh, fabric swatches before I did every anything at all um, because I wanted to make absolutely sure that I wanted that I got exactly what I wanted and what I had in mind um, so yeah this is just like some of all the stuff that I got um, and there was a lot of like trying different combinations and stuff until I got exactly what I wanted um, from the start I was pretty certain that I wanted uh, to change the pink to this uh, like deep red um, to give it more of like a royal feel um, in a way that is not so like princessy if that makes sense. It, there's nothing wrong with being princessy um, but something a bit more serious and adult. Um, and I also wanted to bring, because uh, on the original it only has this like uh, the pink part, um, which I made red, in the skirt and then not on uh, the top here, but I wanted it to go all the way up to create more of like a hourglass kind of shape, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and also to like uh, bind it more together, so it kind of looks like one dress Generally, I chose uh, the fabric I did uh, based on uh, texture and patterns, um, so which is also why I have a lot of upholstery fabric in here, uh, because I wanted the yellow part here, which is upholstery fabric, to have a bit of a pattern to it, but also to feel more heavy and more rich uh, than some of the alternatives I was looking at. And that put together with the... Um, the ribbon here is also upholstery fabric that I've just like cut up. And then I have a duchess sateen in like the sleeves, this and this, and under the sparkly stuff here, um, which I also feel, feel like added a lot to the overall royal 
this of it. <laughs> also, I was just like, uh, this is called Duchess team, um, and she's a Duchess, so I don't know. It just felt <laughs> like it was meant to be. Um, that's kind of a stupid reason, but it was actually part of why I chose it. Um, just to be a little, I guess, inside joke or something. I also chose the sparkly stuff here and uh, some of the gold trim, uh, especially to also add a bit more uh, because the cartoon, even though it's a beautiful dress, is also very flat. Uh, so I wanted it to give that extra like dimension and flair to it. Um, and royalness, as I've said like a hundred times already. One of the things I also changed a lot, uh, which I don't have here, is the hairstyling uh, because hers is very like up, uh, not do, but I uh, changed mine to have this like curly side thingy. It's also what Miss Charming Rose and Hannah Alexandra's artwork happened. And I really like that look and I also feel like it suited my face better as well as like just in general framing the face. Generally, the things that I bought, uh, I bought most of my fabric at a uh, stuff kiosk um, in case anyone is interested. Um, all the decorative ribbons and this like uh, sparkly uh, lace fabric is from Princip Stuff, the same place that I bought the crown. The wig is from Ada, it's a Matilda classic in dark copper red. Um, the shoes, which I have here. Uh, which, even though you, you totally, you can't see it in the cosplay, uh, but it was very important for me that um, they were there because it just felt more right and the dress is also made for me to be in like high heels uh, with the length and stuff. Um, and these are from uh, Dijkman. Um, other than that, I had uh, the brooches, which uh, holds the sash in place. Uh, those as well as these little like earrings that the camera can't focus on. Well, they're very basic. Um, they were thrifted, um, so I was very happy with the, those found, finds. Um, boning for the corset I bought at the uh, Odatron. I think that was everything. Um, don't ask me how much it all cost because. One, I don't know, uh, and two, I'd rather not think about it. It's probably been a really expensive cosplay, uh, but I'm very happy with it. It's all worth it. When I made it, uh, I made the petticoat first, which is under here. Uh, it's just tool that is like ruffled and layered, um, and then put in a. Um, Drawstring. Drawstring closing. Um, so that was pretty basic and I could do that before I picked out all the fancy fabrics, so that was kind of nice. Uh, it was also my first time doing a petticoat, so that's something, um, which is not the only first time thing in all of this, but uh, yeah. Um, then I made the skirt, which is a three fourth of a circle skirt or something like that. Uh, half is uh, this yellow fabric, and then I have a uh, no, it's three fourth, yes, and half a circle is the yellow stuff, and then one fourth is the red stuff, yes. Um, I made the border here so it, that it overlaps. That it, I didn't just sew it on directly; it physically has an overlap here, and it's lined uh, underneath to give it more of an illusion that the red part is like a separate uh, layer, even though it's just one square. Um, and that's pulled together with a drawstring as well. Um, it was kind of important to me that since I was gonna use a lot of energy and money to <laughs> make this cosplay that I would be able to wear it even if my size changed. Um, so everything is made to be fairly uh, flexible size-wise. <laughs> um, the bodice was like the biggest, uh, most difficult piece of this. Um, I hadn't made any bone garment like this before. Um, it's made with the, like an insulating, I think it's called, um, basically. 
there's a sturdy fabric uh, inner layer with boning in it. Then I have a um, fashion layer on top here that was like sewn together um, separately and I hand stitched it uh, onto the dress. I did that with a back stitch to like maximize the security because I was kind of worried with how it would all like hold up because I hadn't done anything like this before. Um, it's fully lined too um, with the same like uh, red satin here. Um, and I did that uh, by hand as well, but with an invisible stitch, uh, so you can't see that many uh, like uh, seams uh, in the bodice, which was something I was going for. Um, the the sleeves here and the trim on the sleeves um, and this top part and all was also hand sewn on. Um, took forever, <laughs> but I'm very happy with the result. Um, it was also very really important for me, as I talked a bit about before, that the uh, lines here kind of lined up, uh, so that it gives the illusion that it's like created as one piece, kind of. Um, and I also felt like that was something that would make... It would very quickly look off, if the lines didn't match up, um, then it would look like I made a mistake even if the original doesn't even have the red part here. Then there's the wick that I styled a million times. Um, I have this thing about wig styling that I'm not very good at it, first of all, uh, but also I treat it more like real hair than I treat it like plastic. Um, which I know there definitely are some downsides to, um, but I kind of like to do it because it gives it a more natural look, in my opinion. And I wanted this to look more natural than pretty, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so I'm actually pretty happy with the, how the styling came out, um, even though it's not accurate in any way. And, there probably is a way to do it better. Uh, I just styled it like if I was styling a person's hair. <laughs> um, and watched a lot of YouTube tutorials on how to do that. And different ways to make buns and stuff like that. Um, it was kind of fun. <laughs> all in all, I made this cosplay over this... Um, excluding the petticoat, because I made that long ago. But the rest of the cosplay I made over the span of like two weeks. Um, and I, I don't know, I just felt like really focused and motivated, uh, <laughs> so it got done fairly quickly, uh, which was lucky because it was finished like three days before I had to participate in the craftsmanship competition where I had like signed up with this cosplay. <laughs> um, so that <laughs> worked out pretty well. Um, I would say my pre biggest regret about this cosplay is that, um, as I said, it's my first time making uh, like bodies like this, um, and I made it to this dress form, uh, and this dress form is based on me, like it's molded after me, um, but it's not squishy, and I am. Uh, <laughs> so I would have liked the uh, top to be a bit more tight-fitted uh, than it is. It fits perfectly fine. But I feel like it could have done a bit more of a dramatic shape. Uh, dramatic sounds dramatic. Uh, but like, uh, it could have given me a better shape if I'd done it more on me than on the dress form. <laughs> that was kind of all about like making the cosplay and such. Uh, and <laughs> I'm still so happy about everything. And I had a lot of fun. Uh, but part of the fun is also uh, getting to wear it and do some fun stuff, which I did. Uh, so I kind of want to talk about that too. Uh, first of all, I participated in the cosplay competition at NinjinCon. It's my first ever cosplay competition. Uh, so it was uh, definitely experience. Uh, I was so nervous. You have no idea. Um, and honestly, I don't remember much. <laughs> uh, 
it, it feels like I blacked out a little bit. Um, luckily, I had like a bunch of friends uh, send me video and photos and such from everything, so I feel like I can kind of relive it. Uh, even though when I got on stage, I feel like I kind of blacked out. Um, but I think that's probably fairly normal, honestly, um, especially when it's kind of the first time trying stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it, it was so fun and my friends were super supportive um, and I, I said I, they just bombarded me with pictures and videos and such. Uh, but I also thought that it was very special um, that a lot of strangers uh, also were very like kind and supportive uh, of me, both like backstage, uh, online, on like my Instagram and stuff, or like on the hallway, in the hallway. Um, and honestly, uh, it it meant so much to me. Um, and if you're one of those strangers, uh, I am so sorry. I was super awkward. Uh, but <laughs> your kindness uh, really meant so much. Uh, I can't even begin to explain it, so thank you. This is the I also, um, I got to do my first, I want to say real location photo shoot. It's not like I haven't like taken pictures at a location before I have, uh, but not with someone who had something else than a phone. Uh, so I feel like it's my first real location photo shoot. Um, it was at the Rosenholm Slot, uh, Rosenholm Slot. It's a castle, uh, and it's a very beautiful one at that. Um, and it made it a very special uh, experience. Um, the staff there was all like, "Ooh, the princess is on visit," or something like that. Uh, it was kind of fun. Uh, they were also very kind. Um, unfortunately, the location has some pretty strict rules, so. I can't share the pictures from there, um, but it was uh, so much fun. Uh, we only got like permission to shoot there because uh, Rebel Photography, the photographer there, uh, was doing it as a like school assignment. Um, so they gave her permission to uh, shoot there under the condition that we didn't share any pictures online. I've shown it to like all my family and friends though. I have this uh, picture I got from uh, inside the castle, um, which we honestly weren't supposed to go in there, but the staff was like, we're here anyway, you can take a few pictures. Um, and one of the pictures from in there is just so beautiful and it it just means everything to me. So I'm happy I, get, I have that and I can show it and like, reminiscent about it, uh, even though I can't share it. Um, some of the pictures I can share though are also like absolutely beautiful because luckily uh, Rebel Photography was uh, kind enough to take some pictures other than like at the castle but like uh, on nearby locations. Um, and on the day it was snowing, uh, which was uh, very cold but also very pretty. And uh, Angel Oz, who was also there as like a helper, uh, had a lot of fun uh, trying to like adjust my dress and such. Uh, where when I was like, you have to pose like this, and then you can't move, and then Angel Oz goes to like adjust your dress, but without leaving marks in the snow. And uh, it was uh, it was an experience, and I had a lot of fun. Um, and I definitely look forward to doing something like that again at some point. I think that's all I have for this time around. Um, if you have any questions uh, about any of this, or comments or whatever, feel free to do what the comments are there for. 
uh, or write me on like Instagram. That's also always an opportunity. Um, yeah, uh, my next cosplay is uh, the Super Plum Princess from Barbie and the Nutcracker. Um, I already started posting a bit about it on Instagram and honestly at the point where I actually edit this together and put it online, I might already be done with that cosplay because I'm fairly long at this point. Um, but that is also gonna be a lot of fun and it's my first like real group cosplay. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. When I'm done with the, the Shiro Plum Princess, I'm thinking of uh, doing a video like this again. I think it's a fun way to kind of collect my thoughts about uh, cosplay and remember all the fun stuff I got to do. <laughs> but uh, until then, see ya!